This is pot. I like to talk about the balance in art and design. As you can see, there are many types of balances. But in this particular case here, I grouping into four different group. The first one is symmetrical balance, second asymmetrical balance, third radial balance, and the last one is this condense or off balance. Balance is the visual way of the elements in composition the balance is used to add st stability at the structure create emphasize and to create dynamic in design one should attempt to press visual elements in an aesthetically pressing arrangement or particular arrangement to fulfill a purpose or achieve particular look and feel normally human mind is enjoy a balance than imbalance which is create a sense of peaceful and secure the first type of balance is symmetrical balance symmetrical balance is the a mirror of the image balance which is if you divide your image into two sections, one side is probably equal to other size. So the, all the visual elements that showing in one side of your screen are mirrored onto the other side. So this, they don't have to be identical of the visual element or don't have to be exact, but it can be similar in number, color, shape, and scale. So when visual elements are equal in the wedge, they are said to be in balance. So most likely you can see these two square box in the same size and color and on the same distance from the center is you know weight equally on both sides. So it gives you a sense of balance and stability. You can see from the layout of the balance. Um, on this example here, um, you can balance the, the image on the left, which is have two columns. That one side is the image itself, and other side is the text. And on the center part, you can see the center one is the image, and then it's balanced with text and images on both sides. And the third one on the right hand is the center of everything. You can see the image right on the center column, and then distribute with the small images and text and image on the bottom. So it gives you a sense of stability and uh, uh, equal on both sides, even though it's a bit different in terms of wage or type of media. On this example here, even though it's not a mirror, but you can see on both sides is pretty much equal, only minor difference. So the perfect symmetrical feel elegant formal and conservative is create a sense of stabilities and securities and this flamingo next is the reflection of it on the water so you can see a sense of balance as well and the last one is will be the image that uh, have geometric shape and perspective uh, both of them both of the side is look exactly identical symmetrical balance to the asymmetrical balance asymmetrical balance right 
as you can see from the icon you can see the objects on the right is much bigger than the object on the left but how this thing balance together so you move the object on the right closer to the center and then the object on the left is still you know on the far left so that means the way you know you can balance these two different side of object by different proximity or different parameter just as like a, a white space or with different kind of color tone and also the size you know to make this image look more interesting or make your composition look more interesting like we say asymmetrical balance so this mean both side is not reflect to each other or not a mirror version of the same thing anymore so asymmetrical balance is used to describe a kind of balance that is not identical on both sides you know but you can also organize uh, by you know using a space using a white space using the proximity using the site using the color you know to manage or to balance that two different things all right so this is getting more interesting because uh, it's not like the same object anymore or not similar object anymore um, on the next slide will be the example of asymmetrical balance um, this asymmetrical balance you can see um, they play with a few group basically it try to balance between two different things and you know even diagonals or shape you know with the solid image something right okay so now if we look at that sim asymmetrical balance uh, for example on this one right you can see if you see this picture the Sun is on your right hand the Sun is on your right hand and if the Sun is on the right hand without that elephant it's going to be feel like it's a bit heavy on the right right but the elephant is quite solid you know is sitting on the bench and watching the sunset or sunrise uh -huh. so the elephant is also quite heavy so if the elephant uh, if without elephant this image is going to be heavy on the right but with the elephant the image is kind of stable you know kind of stable but if we move the elephant a bit far on the left it's going to be quite heavy on the left here so this means the center of the image is also have the impact to how we balancing things right uh -huh. so even though the um, it's not only the light object or the dark object the distance between the center is also affect the balancing of your composition as well on the next image right we talking about the size the last size is seem have heavier than the small one however if you can create some focal point of the small one like in this case here you can see the shadow of the well is go underwater right so it's cute but the board the kayaks is on the right hand is much smaller you know but however with the composition you still see this is kind of balance right okay let's take a look on the next one this one is a silhouette of the um, of the scene uh -huh. when we see when we say silhouette is mean 
like you shooting something that have uh, like outline only you know without the detail of your subject but the background is more uh, stand out so in this case here you can see the tree and also the um, the bicycle and the photographer on the bicycle right but all of them is silhouette because there's no detail at all it's just a shadow and what you see right you see a bright background you know of the sky something like this so the value also mean um, effect to the balance so in this case here value is mean the light and dark tone shade of the image now is an example um, on this one right you can see this as a symmetrical because it's a reflection but you also may see that as symmetrical balance because one side is the heavier than other side something but on this particular one right they like to focus on the color how we use the color to balance this element together so the warm bright color are more eye-catching than the cooler or neutral muse one so um, when you look at the red is considered to be heavier than the less strong color like yellow or something uh -huh. so human eye is more attract to the uh, warmer color than the color color and the next example about the texture or the detail when you look at the image right the image this image have the feather on the left side which is more detailed than the right side it seems to be out of focus so the idea of this is the texture object uh, appear to to give you a sense of three-dimensional and also feel physically heavier than the object that you know without the texture or another thing like on this case here is out of focus on the right hand yeah seem to be lighter okay let's take a look at the example next one um the quantity so the quantity also have the factor uh impact to the weight or to the balance of the composition a few small objects can balance out a single large object so you can you can try a few different like a few small objects right and try to balance with a bigger objects so in this case here you can see a small eggs right surrounding with the the bigger ones on the center also the shade of the egg also different right like we say the darker shade is seem to be heavier even though it's small the next example um, we can say isolation or we can say proximity or we can say a white space this idea is uh, the item by itself is more eye-catching than the item that one of many so that's mean like this is obvious you know so with the item you know without anything surrounded or with you know a contrast background it will help this item stand out more okay Almost the last example, uh, orientation. 
Um, the idea of orientation. Um, the diagonal elements are heavier than the vertical or horizontal one. So I'm not uh, quite convinced, you know, but you know, as they say, you may experiment with that, you know, um, you may try about, you know, between the vertical or horizontal example compared to the diagonal one and see how you can balance this together. Uh -huh. Okay. So now uh, we're done with the asymmetrical balance. So the third kind of balance is radial balance. Uh -huh. So this third kind of balance is more like um, where the elements or the element radi radius out from the center point. So your focal point is the center point. So it is very easy to maintain a focal point in the radial balance. So basically the radius balance, right, is going to surround your focal points on that. Depend on the intentional purpose or a look and feel. So designer must be sent which type of balance to execute. So you can take a look at the example. Okay, on this one, right, you can see the rectangle shape surround it, surround the round shape, right? So it's, this gives you a diagonal leading line to the center of the point in contrast to the middle one, right? So you can see the spiral. So all the, uh, the circle shape is go in the spiral movement into the center point. And then on the right one, you can see this composition as very center, you know, very uh, symmetrical balance, but in the form of radio. Okay, let's take a look at sample here, right? So you, you will see the combination of asymmetrical and also you can also argue with this is could be off balance, you know, it's not balance at all. But uh, this one, they give us as the example of radius balance, the elements of it, right? The circular shape maintain the center point of it, something. Uh -huh. And this is another example, like the spiral of the Nautilus shell. So you can see this kind of movement right into the center. Same thing with the stairwell, right? So if you look from the um, look look up, right, and shooting with the Y angle, so you will generate the uh, spiral movements that uh, you know consider as a radius balance. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. So this condense or off balance. So basically the idea of off balance is should not balance at all, right? Because, uh, you know, from the first three, you still feel, you know, it's balanced somehow. But the off balance is suggests motion and action. So you can see from this icon here, right? It's just all the weight is to the left hand, right? But um, they make most people uncomfortable and uneasy. So if your content of your design is also intend to be uncomfortable and make people think, so this is going to be really interesting to approach to use. Uh huh. But you you will probably have to need to carefully piece them together. Uh -huh. So let's take a look at the off balance example in the design layout. 
So you could see here, right? There are three poster. Um, in the way is off balance, but you know, sometimes I could, I just feel like it's become like asymmetrical balance, because in the way when designer decide something, like for example on this one, right? So without this bird, oligami bird. Right, it's going to be heavy on the too heavy on the right hand. However, with the bird and certain amount of design elements here, so it's kind of balancing out, you know. So, I would say between this condense and asymmetrical balance is also similar, in certain way, or radical or uh, radical uh, balance, and semester balance, estimacy balance, also have something in common and something different. So you can see, you know, certain amount of similarity between these four types and certain amount of differentiation on these four types as well. Now uh, I have a, a work, a design work of uh, Nancy Scolos and Thomas Vedell on this example layout here um, you can see you know even though the image itself is off balance but with the typographic elements and with the text right it's also helping to balance the composition in the way and also it give you the idea of movement and give you the idea of dynamics around the composition itself. On the next two is also the work of Nancy Scolos and Thomas Vedell. On the right one is more like computer generated images combined together. So the work was done on Quantel pen box. Uh, the proprietary system before the personal computer took over the desktop publishing designs. Uh -huh. During that time, the computer is not that powerful enough for personal computer. You still need a proprietary computer to, you know, decide such a kind of work. And um, I'm going to give you the, um, the example of the art as well. So on this part here, I think Ajahn Tin Tin maybe can give me some comment as well. It's about more like a painting. How do you feel with the balance and you know how the art elements influence you know to the composition? Uh, I mean, uh, what what do you think, what do you think, Kapajan? <laughs> very well on um, yourself, but. Um, I think it's quite quite an obvious uh -huh. um, it's quite an obvious and very simple way to show balance because you have the two sides on the left and the right right and you focus point a little bit above the middle of the page uh, which is this uh, sheep uh -huh. which is to symbolize a Christ and and right. your eye naturally leads from the left and the right right um like a is it a one point perspective or yeah this that's what we probably consider a one point perspective mm -hmm. or if we want to consider yeah this is should be one point perspective cup <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, I think this is a well-known one, The School of Athens by Raphael. Uh, so we see the, the same thing happening here with the perspective, um, is that our eye is led from the base, from the left and right. We have also two groups, and then our eye is led through the three pillars, three or four pillars, uh, right. right to the center point, and we have, uh, I, f I always forget who it is. Oh, Plato. Aristotle and Plato. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the, yeah. Later, the student of Aristotle and right. That was very famous philosophers during this time. So. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. This one also a one point perspective. Yeah. I I also have a a sketch version that uh, I got from the Google Art and Culture. Um, the uh, the original drawing on here. Uh, so I'm going to click that link and see. Yeah. Okay, let's delete the link. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so the link. Okay. So this is linked to the um, School of Athens sketches um, it gives you the idea before you come to the uh, Leo painting right um, the artists often have to sketch one um, this image here is the uh, the original copy sketches from the Raphael yeah. so you can see a very detail before he doing the real work on that um, this guy here um, some people believe this is him the uh, the artist who draw this picture Raphael's yeah okay and yep also um, um, do you feel uh, this is the last supper right um, do you feel um, with different period do they have a different type of balance in like in fashion like in certain period they use very similar type of balance this one is a little bit less obvious than the last one right uh -huh. Yeah, because the last two were, especially the first one was very simple, right? Um, nearly, nearly like a mirror on both sides, right? Um, but this one is a little bit more. You, you get a sense of a wave going oh. through the the people, but you can see on both the left and the right that there is a group of three figures, right? And everyone is facing different a different way, so there's right. a different energy dynamic. Right. But the architecture is very, very symmetrical if you look at the ceiling. Right. If you look at the um, windows at the back. Uh, but we still have Christ, Jesus Christ in the middle. Just right. So the again telling us this is the most important. Right. In this painting. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. Um, this one, uh, Rio Donado da Vinci, draw it in uh, fourteen ninety, right? And we also have a lot of Last Supper, you know, during that period. Um, this is uh, from Antonio de, uh, Antonio Baltaforio, a bit later on from Rio Donado da Vinci. So this is on 1515. Also, it's very similar composition, almost like a, a make a, a copy version of that. So this two group here um, have some link like by using this hand right to move and like lead it to the center as well. And also the way that uh, all the sand facing to the center direction. Mm, except for one, except for one thing, right? Right. Um, on the left, and he's leaning away yeah. from Christ and looking down. So we know that this person uh, is not really part of this group. 
uh, this one, right? Yeah, and this is, uh, we, I think we spoke about this in the drawing class. This is Judas, uh -huh. who is uh, the person who um, basically got Christ crucified. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Okay, cup. All right. Um, okay, let's see. Yep. Uh, I have one more example here uh, from our recent visit to Wanko experience. Um, what do you think about this image, Cup? Uh, as far as the composition and the balance concern. Uh, this is uh, the story nice from Vincent Wanko. Um, yeah, it's a very, it's a very dynamic and interesting painting, isn't it, Ajahn? Um, I think you see two things very quickly uh, when you first look at it. It's this big tree on the left. Yes. And then this uh, wavy kind of cloud or some sort of energy crossing it. Right. So, and what's interesting is the, sorry, the shape of the tree and the shape of this cloud is actually quite similar. Right. Um, and though the tree is very dominating because it's on the far left. Right. And you see the sun on the right at the top. Right. Um, elements sort of make it a little bit more balanced. But you see that there's a kind of line going from the bottom to the top. Yes. The I, I can feel the the sun and the tree, right? It's kind of balance yeah. each other. And the whole atmosphere is just seen moving with his brush stroke. <laughs> it just feels like energy moving aloud. We have another one, uh, the last one, yeah, the sunflower. Yep. So will you consider this as a, like, symmetrical balance? Um, if you look at the vase, the vase is pretty much in the center. center. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, you see that he has uh, six six flowers roughly in the center with a with a more dark brown. Right. Color. Yeah. Really, then, really yeah. centerized. Yeah. Yeah. So they have the same color and they're very much in the center and mm -hmm. he's faced out some lighter yellow flowers. Right. And the spacing is not too regular because that would make the painting. Mm -hmm. A little bit boring, right? When everything is too symmetrical. So, right. Um, but I would still say, I would still count this as symmetrical if you look at the... Yes. I, I, I feel in the real life, right, it's a mix, a bit of everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but just mm -hmm. the one one thing that more do, uh, more more dominant or more obvious. Okay, so student, how are you? Are you awake? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we we just visit uh for the uh on site student right? We just visit the Wenko and Eddie Warhol last I think last week or last two week yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, okay, so now um, i like to give a conclusion, yeah? Uh, what the factor that can also help you manage balance in terms of design? So, the first factor is the color. The color also play important role um, to make the the balance as a balance or 
a balance as of balance or asymmetrical balance uh -huh. so um, the color we divide into three main characteristic hue is the color itself saturation is the um, the how to say <laughs> the saturation is the the um, the pigment of the color or the scent of the uh, the color the value is the darkness or the lightest right uh -huh. so in this part here the value the darker color is seen more visually heavier than the lighter color so you can see the black color is more um, heavier than the white and of course like the light color as well however the size of the shape is also matter so you know if the white light like maybe light a white big yellow shape and it could balance with the small red shape or something all right and saturation so the more saturated color is also more intense or give you way visually heavier than the neutral one uh -huh. so the color can be mixed less intense by mixing with the opposite color on the color view so in the next few weeks we're going to talk about more about this kind of color you know between color hue saturation and value so also okay the last one the hue right if you look at the hue view you will see divide the view into two parts is a warm part and the cold part the warm part is like orange red yellow which is have more visual weight than the cooler color part uh -huh. and also attract the human in term of perception more than the cooler part also in the computer world right you can also change the transparency or the opacity of the color so with the opaque area is give you more visual weight than the transparent area something like that the next factor is the shape like we say on the previous image right the square tend to be have more weight than the circle and it's more complex shape like hexagon pentagon it tend to have more visual weight than the simple shape like a circle or square or oval so this is kind of psychology I think you probably have to experiment that you know so as far as the research concern so this is like uh, uh, the idea that give you the option you know to play with your shape the size of the shape is also very really important the size the larger size is give you more heavier than the smaller shape all right so that is like common already uh -huh. so you can also think about the quantity of it as well the smaller shape a few smaller shape could balance a bigger shape as well and the line right we work with the line a lot so thicker line right have more weight than the thin line so that is everyone you know familiar with the texture the shape of the texture that have more texture is give you heavier than the shape without any texture okay and then the pressman shape or object located toward the edge or the corner of the composition have more visual weight than the uh, offset okay um, so something like what they say here right the shape or the object 
that close to the edge or the corner of this composition or of whatever composition you have is more visual way yeah so the foreground and the background can be balanced each other by using the contrast such as black or white or complementary color which is opposite color on the color wheel as well so the item also can be balanced each order with the diagonal line and vertical lines or, or not just a vertical line or horizontal, horizontal line uh -huh. so as the sample said right earlier um, the diagonal line is seen more impact than vertical or horizontal line now it's come to important part uh -huh. the class activities right uh we also going to have you guys uh, work on the project uh -huh. and the project uh, will give you two weeks you don't need to finish this week right the first part of the project is taking a four picture you know from four type of different balance such as symmetrical balance asymmetrical balance radio balance and off balance okay by using your camera if you have um, if you have the camera DSLR or single and effects camera or mirrorless is the best however if you don't have the camera yet it's okay you can use your smartphone I believe everyone have a smartphone that can take a picture right so you can take four picture right and we will talk about what four picture is about right so you can select four picture that interest you and on the second part of the assignment you will probably have to write a short essay or short story about the picture that you take uh -huh. based on who what when where why and how so with this question here right it will help you write a, so uh, a short story of your picture for example, like I take a picture of the mark, right? I could say, okay, what is this mark about? You know, so this mark is could be from a uh, hard rock cafe, or this mark could be a uh, you know create from a a famous artist, something like that. And what is made it from? Like made it from a ceramics and a special kind of ceramics that you have to take the soil from the um, you know highland like Bhutan or Tibet and you know uh, put it in the cold area for like six months before you doing and mixing with the different kind of animal bone or something so this is what and when this mark was made so this mark was made from like 18th century you know technique or something and that produced again in 1990 or something so this is when right and where this must for was made from and why you want to make this kind of mark you know something like that and how they do that so with that simple you know question that we have here right you should be able to generate a story for your image of them so you need four image for story and then you put that together as a layout poster layout on each type of balance you know so for example like you want to post that as the you know example here you can use your picture right and maybe write something about that picture you know in the different type of composition like this one is asymmetrical balance this one as 
asymmetrical balance, this one as radial balance, and this one as off balance, something like that. And then the technique is freestyle. You can use the technique whatever you want. But today, um, I like to introduce you how to use Adobe Photoshop and also how to use Adobe Illustrator so you can you know play around with that for someone who haven't familiar with Photoshop or Illustrator yet and at the final right so you're going to put your picture for picture that you took on the 8 by 10 inch you know canvas side and then put some text on create the poster design and save as the RGB TIFF format with our sudden view compression and you can submit to the Google uh, the Google Classroom something like that okay any question you can ask the question if you have any question about the assignment so this assignment give you two week period what do you think it should give you enough time and next week we will discuss about your four picture next week yes next week we will discuss so next week you don't need to finish everything right you just take four picture Okay. And prepare about the story of your four picture. Do you have any question about how to write your own story based on who, what, when, where, why, and how? Uh, yes, Sir John. Thank yes, you yes, yes. Question. Okay, good. Okay, uh, go ahead um, for the first question. So, yes. does it necessary have to be Photoshop or Illustrator, or mm. I can do in other program as well? Um, no. Actually, it's not necessarily to be even computer at all. So right. if you take the picture, Please. right, you print it out, you can, you know, just paint over it. <laughs> mm. All right. Thank you so for that's, time. that's why on the fourth, you see on the fourth here, right, the technique is freestyle, can be traditional or digital. Because we do not have uh, a proper digital cast for you guys yet, right? So... Does mean you can experiment with you know open technique. Yes. Okay. Next question. Um, if we're doing it digitally, do we have to print it out as a poster already, or can we just save it in that size? Yeah, you just save it in that size. It's okay, and you can submit me. Uh, if you do in Illustrator, right? You may need to rasterize in Photoshop. Yeah, so I will talk about the technique for you later on. Yeah. Thank so you. yeah, so the um the next week we will you know maybe talk about the technique in Photoshop. Yeah. So how you manage your image for image something like that. Uh huh. And then uh we will talk about Illustrator how you import your Photoshop into Illustrator. You know, and then give you one more week to do that, something like that. So next week lecture will be a bit on the technical part. Yeah, okay. Anything else for the question? So the um two week should be good, right? What do you think? Should be enough time for you. Yeah, I think it's okay. Good. Okay, yeah, okay, good. All right. Okay. Um, if you have no question, right? Um, maybe um, we're going to take a break, right? And then um, some of you may want to continue working, but some of you who like to uh, who went to the exhibition um, would like to present your 10 images of your story from the Wanko experience and your Eddie Warhol. So we will be um, maybe take 15 minute break, right? And then come back 
Uh-huh. But uh, for someone who haven't joined the exhibition, you feel free to, you know, to see the your friend presentation or start working on the um the four picture. And if you have a question, you can feel free to ask me. I will be here until 4.30. So, uh, we're going to take 15 minute break, right? So, we will see each other again. Um, should be enough for 15 minutes. Or you want half hour? Uh, half hour is fine. Okay, so we're going, okay, we're going to meet again at 1 o'clock. Okay? And we'll talk, let you guys talk about your Eddie Warhol and Van Gogh experience. And some of you who didn't go, right, feel free to, to see the presentation. And also, if you have a question about the assignment, you can ask the, the question as well. Sound good? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you, Kap Ajan Tin. <laughs> um, you, you feel free to, to stay with us as well, if you're not so busy. Yeah. Okay, Kap. Uh, okay, let's take a break. Yeah. See you guys again at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, see you. See you. Bye. Kap. Kap.